Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of DadCast. I am JP. He is Nick. Nick, how are you, man? I'm good, man. Still recovering from Vegas. But yeah, I good. know. We spent a, <laughs> almost a week in Vegas last week, and then my happy ass literally flew back there Monday night, uh, <laughs> stayed for like six hours, and drove a car that I bought all the way back 13 hours, and yesterday I am home and arrived and here. But that is neither here nor there. Today, we have the honor of having the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Mickey Avalon on DadCast. Mickey, how are you, man? Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? We're doing great, man. We're pretty stoked you're here. I, I kind of feel like I need to put on some sunglasses now. I know. <laughs> King's wearing them. That's why I'm wearing them, because I was like, I'm going to match, match Elvis. There you go. Yes. So, so how like Vegas, what kind of car did you get? Um, so I bought my high school. Well, it's the second one, actually. Um, I graduated high school like very long ago in the 90s. And I had a, a, a 5.0 Mustang back in the day. And nice. I've been trying ever since to get another one, but you know, for neither here nor there, or, you know, kids cost a lot of money. I got kids. I got to take oh. care of them, but I finally came into a, a little bit of money where I can actually treat myself. And I found one and I bought it, but then I found a better one, uh, in Vegas and I drove down there or I flew down there to pick it up and, and drove it back. So I, I literally have two five Oh Mustangs sitting in my driveway right now. Looking something and never comes and then you get two of them. right exactly it's it's uh, so now you know one's automatic one stick we're ready to rock and roll i'm gonna i'm gonna fix them up a little father son project that him and i are gonna do and and uh, right. hopefully get those things cool so how's life man how are things since we've last seen you up here in medford things are great uh what i was there probably what five six years ago give or that take was, yeah <laughs> let's let's see yeah let's get it up yeah i don't i don't have a date on here I have a picture, <laughs> but I don't have a date. You played the uh, Rocky Tonk. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that was. Uh, I love it out there because I, I have some family in Ashland. And so I've been there a bunch. And uh, what's happened since then, the world got the world got kind of out of control. But we don't need to talk about that anymore because it's already been talked about too long. And uh, I just been doing my thing. I was I went to Indonesia for a while while uh, during when when I wasn't able to perform or anything and right. then I, I made a new and got to put a new band together out there wrote a record that we got to record when down here they're about to fly down we're recording the album uh, with the, the the guy who's producing it is Jesse Hughes the lead singer of Eagles of Death Metal oh and, shit nice yep, band's called Mickey Avalon and the Fuck Boys. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but the you. That's so, awesome. Man. So when is that? When is that all supposed to be finalized, give or take? Well, we got the whole record written and recorded, just like on the computer, you know. Right. Do it right. They all got to get visas to get down here. So it's kind. We're kind of doing. It's kind of in the process right now, and hopefully in the next two months they'll get here. We'll record it in a few days and then, you know, so I, I would, I would sometime in 2023, 20, I would say for sure. Right on. And there's, okay. and since the world is kind of back to normal ish, I know we don't want to get into all the details of that, but are you, is, is Mickey Avalon touring anytime again soon? You got any shows planned? Is that something that is in the works? I got hand, like handfuls. I got a show in uh, close to Medford. I got one in, Bend, Oregon, right on February third. So I got a little run at the end of the month. I don't know when is this podcast live. No, we're no. it's going to drop probably well after the February. Okay, so uh, so yeah. By the time you guys hear this, I'll have been on a little tour in uh, Pacific Northwest, Oregon, uh, Washington, and California, and then going to Colorado, Denver, Colorado, in the middle of um, March. They're all kind of still just one offs right now. A few shows here, a few shows there, and then other ones coming in. Just there's a, there's just you know there's a lot of issues still. So I'm just going on shows that uh, make sense to me and that aren't in the middle of like a blizzard or something. You know, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> yeah, Pacific Northwest. Like, well, you're coming here in the middle of winter. That 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 could happen. That could. that's not. Too it's close. 
but like I'm not going to like New York yeah. in the middle. Of the so, and then, and then as far as other country, you know, I just don't even know. Like it's already a pain in the ass for me to get into Canada. I'm not even trying it now because until like everything's like really back to normal, it's just too much of a headache. Yeah, where are you playing at in Bend? Bend, um, you know the name place. Domino what is it? Domino. Room. Domino. Oh, cool. Yeah. So my buddy, um, he he runs the Domino Room. Johnny Davis. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I actually might have to come out and see you. When is that? Come 20, out. The twenty third. You said. Um. Yep. Twenty third. It's twenty third in Bend. Twenty fourth in Bellingham. Twenty fifth in Seattle. Twenty sixth in Portland. And twenty seventh in Arcata. Arcata. That's yeah. one of my old stomping grounds, Humboldt <laughs> County, man. Wow. Yeah. Maybe I'd go find my old car that got stolen. Speaking of which, I had a Mustang that got stolen in Arcata about <laughs> 17 years ago, and I never got that son bitch back. Well, you need to bring the new one there just to rub it in Arcata's face. <laughs> yeah, right. So, Nick, <laughs> exactly. so check it out. The 23rd of February is literally two weeks from now, give or take. Um, I'm getting back from Florida on the 22nd. Why oh, yeah. don't we just drive on up and go hang out with Mickey on the 23rd of the evening? Fuck yeah, I'm in. All right. <laughs> we'll take the Tesla. We'll fucking go. <laughs> Sounds good. No, we're taking the Mustang, man. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're, awesome. We're living at old school, man. I went forget self-driving. I'm actually going to physically drive a car this time. It's, so does it have a does it have a tape deck? Do I need to like make a mixtape for us for this trip? It does. Hey. It totally does. It's got a tape and a CD player in it at the same oh, time. <laughs> that car, because uh, that was like the car who, he, I don't, that was like the top, you know, that was the car of the guy who's getting laid, like on the football team. That was like the quarterback of the football team the, or yeah. someone who's, but usually it was someone who got it himself. That, that was my intention back in high school, but uh, it didn't actually work out that way for me. You know, yeah, we, 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 we tried, but, you know, it, it eventually <laughs> the whole being popular for a, a car came a little a few years after that. I'm trying to pull yeah. up a picture here. I, I want to show you this thing since we're doing it. Uh, Come on. Come on. So it's a square one. I know exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Right, yeah. Your oh, screw it. No one cares. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sure they'll, in social media, they'll be doing up. So we got February 23rd. And then what's happening after that is a little, is that when uh, your boys are coming down and hopefully get that thing recorded? Yep. Yeah. That will be, we're trying to, the only issue is because Eagles of Death Metal goes on tour. So we're just trying to get them here before that. Because if not, we got to wait till after that. And, um, Coming from even when it's not COVID, coming from Indo, you know, for Indonesians to come, it just there's just a lot of there's a lot yeah. of moving parts. But we don't want to get other people to play their part. Like we rather the the rich, the real guys, all the original people play. Uh, if it you know, because it just that's kind of how it happened, and that's where the where the magic is. So just yeah, that shows. Uh, I got an art show coming up in uh, April. It might get pushed back to May, but that's in uh, California. And I'm all, you know, I'm always recording. I'm always painting. I'm always just doing my thing. I box now and do Muay Thai. Oh, so. that's right up Nick's alley. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm a dipshit and just challenge former UFC fighters to fight. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and, and, and it, so far it's, it's, the, the plan is is in it's in order. Uh, apparently, it's going to happen. It got pushed back because of COVID, obviously. Yeah. But Nick, uh, in in a uh, he actually had COVID, and in a COVID haze when doing <laughs> a podcast, he challenged Josh Berkman to a fight. Who is uh, I still believe holds the record for fastest knockout in UFC history. And well, you won't feel. Right, exactly. Just, bam, bam. Yeah. So uh, my bet was, dude, if you can last two minutes, that is a win. No matter how you, how you shake it, yeah. And, and I've been told if I last two minutes, Dana White will come and offer me a contract for the UFC. Yeah, right. So I'm, you know, either way, I'm getting paid. If you last two <laughs> so, minutes, bro, you could do porn. I mean, just say exactly. My wife would be stoked. <laughs> Isn't more than you got paid? Be all right, Brad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bill, 
is more than you make. Uh, like they would do those Kimbo Slice fights and some dude would, they'd offer a dude a few grand, but then his hospital bill would be like 10 grand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, something oh, to be got, said I've for got notoriety. Amazing health insurance, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> How, now, I, I, shows, waiting for more shows to come in, and then we're probably going to take off again uh, in in uh, summertime here. Leave for a few months, going back to Indonesia, and um, that's kind of the plan: is to, to come here, tour. Uh, get as many shows as I can in that in that amount of time, and then go back there and uh, just write new music and have a good time. How did you navigate the beginning? Uh, I mean, as an artist, obviously, um, navigate the beginnings of this whole pandemic back in 2020. I mean, at the beginnings as an artist, what did you do? I mean, you couldn't go out and perform. How did? Because you know, this is a question I like to ask a lot of the musical guests we have on. Um, you personally, how did, how did you navigate all that? So the very beginning we were, we performed, we had gigs on the, we had gigs on the books and that we did up until like the beginning of March. Right. And, uh, and I don't watch the news or anything like that. So we're out playing our gigs. I think the last ones might've been Florida. Uh, and then you are starting to hear about this thing and I didn't really pay my, and, See, you could see a few people with uh, masks in the airport. And I, I'd seen that before in Asia and stuff, but never saw it here. But then you heard about it. And yeah. then I go, just assume maybe over in a few weeks, not really something to worry about. Then, then everything shut down. We're just at home. So that was like more, more, more wine drinking, more beer drinking, <laughs> more television, nowhere to go. Uh, walking around the neighborhood a lot and then going to, and then we're like, okay, this is going to drive us crazy. So the only place we could go to was Mexico. So then we go to Mexico a lot. Uh, and then we're like, okay, it doesn't look like it's gonna, it doesn't look like it's gonna end anytime soon. So then a lot of times, even a lot of times you got to just figure out what hoops to jump through, uh, like we couldn't travel anywhere, but then the more we looked into it, you could you could get special visas to certain places. So we're like, okay, if we can't work, might as well get the fuck out of Dodge and wait till we can. Right. So so we went to Indonesia planning on two months and ended up staying ten months because uh, and they didn't come home until it was like not a hundred percent, but not, shows were on the books and it was looked like they were gonna happen and then they did nice. so came home and that's that any cool stories from your time in indonesia that no one's heard before that you're willing to share nothing really crazy like crazy i mean i, I had friends there already made new friends uh that's kind of just that's kind of where my my chick always knew that i would get like i'm a i'm kind of like an addict by nature but you could get addicted to good things too. Right. So she knew I would, she knew I would love boxing and uh, love boxing and more time and all that stuff. Plus I, I fought a lot when I was a kid, but only for like 18 seconds at a time, you know? Uh, so then, but she knew I would never go to a gym or anything. <laughs> so she, tr she kind of tricked me uh, in the starting and then it was, and then that was it. So she, she pretended like she made, made it for herself and then said she didn't feel good but then I already got paid so she's so I'm like well if it already got paid for it I gotta go do it and then I did it and then the rest was history so so I don't know that's not really like an exciting story but that so then I did it every day like maybe two some days one and a half one hour some days two hour. I had like two dudes I work with and uh I just did it every day are you at my Lost my COVID uh, extra pounds and then just got back to got back to my teenage my teenage body. Nice. Are you at the point yet where you can enter blood sport? Not not <laughs> damn yet, but uh, but I, I just I do a little sparring. I go every night because my my coach has a day job, so I go at nighttime. Uh, in Indo, it was better because I could go in the morning. 
by the time I go, I've already put a few back. So that makes it a little harder, but it actually better. Cause if you were in a bar, that's exactly where you would be at, you know? Yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We just, he just, he just teaches me more, you know, like I was so out of shape. I, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't do anything. And now like I could go, I could go the whole, you know, I could go, I could go, go, go. That's a great story, man. So I, I'm not entirely sure, but I think they're actually doing a remake or maybe a sequel down the line of Bloodsport. Can you imagine how cool it would be to have a cameo from Mickey Avalon in there as like just one of the fighters that got his ass kicked at the very beginning of of the tournament, but still to be in or, that? Because you're, you're ready, man. If you know anyone, you know anyone, give him my name. Right? Or, or yeah, or so Mickey Avalon takes the whole damn thing, kicks the crap out of Jean Von Clad's whatever or son. You- <laughs> yeah, graphic of my face beating all of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we know some people. We'll try to make it happen. Nick, okay. I know you had said you had a couple questions you were you, you were thinking about asking. I'm I'm gonna. I, I know I talk too much. I always do it. So I'm I'm giving right. you the conch. Yeah. Can we? Uh, any crazy touring stories? I know we talked a little when you were in Medford, and you had some pretty funny behind the scenes tour stories and. Anything uh, recently happened? Well, obviously not recently because there hasn't been any fucking touring. We got some recently. Uh, we played a probably five, six, five or six gigs out out here. This, I mean, since since we got home. Uh-huh. But crazy stories. Uh, Is home L.A. By the way. What? Is home L.A. By the way. In L.A. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, there's more funny stories. When uh, me and Sa- when me and Dirt Nasty would be out together, he's just he's a big movie star right now, so we're really proud of him, Simon Rex. But mm-hmm. more fun things would kind of happen with him, and it would usually happen like right behind me. And then by the time I turned around and figured out what was going on, I'd miss the whole I'd miss the whole funniness. But all, I mean, all the same shit when I was young: sex, drugs, rock and roll. But Nothing, nothing like funny that I'll probably think of something right after I get off with you guys. But, <laughs> you know, you hear all the stories like Ozzy Osbourne and Motley Crue and then they like snorted ants and they were battling each other. Like, I don't have anything like like that epic where I could. Uh, oh, I got a good one. Go. What? Go. That's kind of funny. Uh, OK, I got a good story. All right. So. My friend Kobe who uh my friend kobe who helped teach me how to surf in uh in indo the first time we met in australia was uh, a long time ago like 10 years ago and we both we both were like on drugs at the time and both like lost friends and and dr- deaths and stuff so i was in the i was in the shower I was in the shower with this chick and didn't realize the door was locked and the the whole house was fl- like the shower was clogged and the whole house was like flooding, you know, but like we didn't notice. So then he thought like we we, we died in there or something or we're dying. So he kicked it. He kicked the door down to like come and save us. And then it was just this awkward thing. But but uh, it helped bring a good beginning of a good friendship because it's like someone who's going to like save your life and you just met so i don't know if that's a good that's that's a crazy story it's a mickey avalon story we'll take it man <laughs> yeah <laughs> always talks about it and like my boner and everything <laughs> be careful though those shorts you're wearing too man we don't want that to happen on on air. <laughs> um so nick normally typically does a a segment called fast five which is where he asks five random questions did you did you shuffle them up for it today or did you just decide to nix it completely nick i'm gonna do i have one that i ask everybody that's a safe one that we can ask billboard yeah the billboard question all right go ahead have at it if you could have a billboard with anything on it what would it be and why like for me or just like anything to look yeah, for, for you, for anything, if you could have just a billboard that you put anything on, what would you put on it? Maybe just like good, 
good like 80s cleavage and then with like Mickey Avalon necklace like in in uh handwriting that is original <laughs> that is the first time we've heard any boobs uh on the billboard and I appreciate that it, me too Mickey Avalon <laughs> you can play a show with any artist living or dead who's it going to be Jerry Lee Lewis really that's Ooh. awesome that, badass <laughs> that's a good or, answer fuck yeah or, uh, yeah, Jerry Lewis. I asked this question. Uh, so a, a little background on me. Um, I've worked in radio, gosh, close to 20 years now here in Southern Oregon where I live. And uh, that has afforded me the opportunity to interview all kinds of artists, you know, from all spanning all genres. And there's one particular question I like to ask them. And one guy uh, nailed this question better than any other person I've ever asked the question before. I'm going to ask you the question. No pressure, by the way. Um, it's total simple. But the answer he gave was just unbelievable. And uh, I'll share that answer with you after your answer. And we'll see if you can match it. What is one yeah. thing Mickey Avalon cannot leave the house without? <laughs> yeah. uh, what can I not leave that? Honestly, my medication. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. All right. So George Thorogood answered that question without Whiskey. without blinking an eye. He says, "What's one thing I can't leave the house with without, before leaving? Uh, kissing my wife." Ah, uh, and I've lived. <laughs> no no and, and and that's the same thing no one everyone thinks something physical um, or whatever um you know that's just his brain thought a little bit differently when it came to answering that question and and again that's still one of the best answers out there but medication's good man can't leave home without your medication depending on what that like, medication is or it could be without taking a shit or something never leave home with <laughs> that <laughs> I would have expected that one, man. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and edit this episode, and that's gonna be the answer. <laughs> no, either one. Okay. <laughs> uh, you are trapped on an island, and somehow that island has electricity. Yeah. And you can only have a single CD. Is it gonna be Jerry Lee Lewis again, or is it gonna be a different artist? No, Velvet Underground. Velvet Underground. Oh, damn. Yeah. Nick, I'm I'm coming off with these questions, man. Come on, you got you got to have one for me. Let's go. I only had the billboard question today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, oh, okay. Well, actually, actually you I got one. Your okay. favorite venue in the country, in the world, like anywhere you've ever played. What is your favorite venue, and and why is it that? My favorite venue. It's kind of two, but they're kind of the same, similar. Uh, I played lots of lots of venues and they're all almost the same because I have cool people that come to the show everywhere. There's no place where like that place, they're really assholes. Or... So for the most part, every venue looks, smells and is about the same. But mm -hmm. then two that are different and they're, maybe there's more, but that I've played at is uh, Red Rocks and The Gorge. And the reason is, is because it's outdoors, like as the sun's coming down or if the sun's are, it's just a whole, like the way the sound, it's just a whole nother, like, yeah. like I don't play arenas and stuff. I play like dingy little bars. So oh. that is just like a more magical experience, I would say. Yeah, you, you are right though. You're the fans that do come out. Like I've done two shows with you and hands down the fans that come out for you are incredible like out of any artist i've ever worked with and i've worked with hundreds over the years you have the best fans like they're they're fucking amazing they're they're just they're they're nice they're they're there they're into it yeah like every you know every once in a while someone's gonna get like a little too fucked up and you know maybe come to fisticuffs or something but like that's everywhere there's not like somewhere where, and every city has like little nuances that the people have or whatever. But for the most part, the everyone so like um, like the Grateful Dead or something. Mm -hmm. Everyone's cool. So yeah. those two those two spots. And, and for the record, nice. for any other uh, ho uh, 
person, actor, celebrity, musician who's been on DadCast, who happens to be watching this episode right now, uh, your fans are still pretty cool too. Okay, I just got I got <laughs> got to throw that out there for Nick. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes you know you know what i'm saying so who's who's roman in the background there mickey who's no no, no who's, who's walking around and hanging out and talking to you uh the the one who i was supposed to say leave the house oh all right well, i just want to say hello from jp and nick that you know i because i hear hello. her back there she's the uh she's the the brains and the and the beauty behind the the brains the and the beauty i know how that one works uh, she wrote down to ask if we could put this out before the 23rd, but I think you said it. You know what? I actually was considering that when, uh, when we were talking about that, um, what I'm going to do actually is yet to answer that question. Yes. Yes. Brains awesome. and beauty behind Mickey Avalon. If you can hear me right now, um, I will, we'll put this out as a, uh, like a special bonus episode because, um, as you are aware, um, you know, you know what we, you know what dad cast is all about. So this episode is actually, you know, it's a little different than what we normally do, but it's, it's not a bad the thing. Behind um, the scene. Yeah. yeah. Avalon, everybody's daddy. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> and, uh, so what I'm going to do is the 23rd, is that the first, uh, date of those, uh, group of That's, shows? And, uh, that will be the one you guys come to and I'll have, I'll have full energy for all of them. But that will be like pre really like being on a lot of airplanes and mm -hmm. a lot of these uh, a lot of these ones even would be very far to drive. But then the airplanes end up being just as much of a pain in the ass. So like it's a little stretch of, of kind of gnarly, even though it doesn't look like it on paper. So right. you're getting me most fresh. Are you guys are you driving up? We're no, no, it's all flights. OK, because we. So much merch and uh, basically the, the dude we're flying, we're driving a few, the dude who promotes Bellingham and Seattle, we're flying the, all the middle ones, but then the end ones is flying. We fly, I mean, we we're fly. driving all the middle ones and flying the end ones. We fly, drive, drive, fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, so now that's settled. So what I'm going to do is, so like I mentioned earlier in uh, in this episode, I'm flying out to uh, South Florida. Uh, me and my lady are taking a week vacation. I'm literally flying to Hollywood Beach, Florida, so I can eat fish tacos for five days straight. That's literally the only reason we're going. The best fish tacos yeah, really in the world. Huge. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, what's important is I'll be back on the 22nd. We're going to see you on the 23rd. Today is the 9th. That gives me six days to produce this episode and get it up. So what I'm going to do is make sure that that is done. And I would say Tuesday, the 14th. Nope. Screw that this weekend. I'm going to drop it Saturday or Sunday this weekend. Uh, so we can help promote that show and uh, the group of shows you got coming up this week. We are next week. And send me, yeah, send me all this stuff to uh, send me all this stuff. Promote. I've also been, I paint and I've been, I've been pa I painted since before I got into music. So that's what I've always wanted to be. The, and then the music came and then I stuck with that, but still painted also. But then another thing, when COVID hit, I, st I was able to start selling paint, like sell paintings to pay the bills. So I do, I brought some. So yeah, let's see. I, it. I, been, I do like commit like people's dogs, cats, all that stuff. And then that's something that's particular to them. Like no one else wants a, a picture of someone else's dog or cat. But then sometimes <laughs> things that other people would like to. So then I make a print out of them. And the prints are also a lot more affordable than uh, like a one, you know, than the actual painting. So here's like Budweiser can I painted. Nice. I made it print. Uh Here's prints that got made into a print, a prince print. <laughs> nice. Uh, Jane Fonda, someone wanted, so I did the Jane Fonda uh, mug shot. Right, Vietnam era. Yep. So, and then these are usually, I usually do about 10 of them. Uh, here's an American flag. I did that for uh, Memorial Day. Dude, these are really good, Mickey. I, I mean, seriously, I, I dig those. Okay, the, yeah. you got to do one of the, you got to do one of those for me. <laughs> send, send 
That's what I'll do for you for getting this out uh, when you get yeah, it out. So send me that photo. <laughs> we can do that. All right. Okay, cool. And then here's some roses that I painted from my mom. These are all watercolors because I used to just paint in uh, oils, but then I, I – I just got a studio again where I can't paint in oils again, but for the last few years I didn't have a studio, so I could do watercolors in the um, in the house. So that's how that happened. And then these are the tour posters, which I'll bring you guys. My I didn't do this. My buddy Ika in Indonesia, he uh, oh. so I'll be signing these at, on tour and nice. give meet and greets. But I'm, I'll bring some for you guys too. Sweet cool. man. And where can anyone listening or watching this episode? Um, reach out to you to get their own custom Mickey print. Thank the, the custom ones are paintings. Uh, and then that is they DM me on Instagram or email me at mini Avalon at gmail.com. M I N N I E Avalon at gmail.com. And then as far as the, the prints, uh, those are on my Etsy store, which there's a link in, uh, on my, um, it's basically called Avalon's Originals. Yeah. Avalon's Originals on Etsy. There you have it. Go yeah. Very help cool. the man pay Thank his bills because you're getting some kick-ass artwork out of the deal, man. That's right. I'm getting a yeah. Mustang out of the deal. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for that. Sweet. Dude, that's going to be sweet. Hell yeah. I'm going to do, I always do like, a, for my Etsy store, I always do like a code, a coupon code for like the holidays, like on uh like for Christmas, I did twenty five percent off. For for Valentine's Day, I'll do fourteen percent off, and it'll just be like a code off everything on there. Dig Sweet. it! So check it out, Mickey Avalon's uh, Avalon Arts at the Etsy store, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. I'm sure there're links available. Uh, good stuff, yep. man. You got it yep, going man. on, musician slash artist. I just I had an idea. Um, yep maybe you've done it. Maybe you haven't done it. Maybe you haven't even thought of such a thing, but maybe just maybe you throw up an easel on one of your shows and you literally do a piece of art while performing a song on stage. That would be, that'd be something. And then put that up that would, thing for auction. I would need a lot of coordination. I know <laughs> they do. But wait, and someone else is doing it. I could do like could do in between or something. I could bring like someone up and paint them real quick in between songs or do it at the meet and greet. But yeah, I can barely chew gum and walk at the same time. So, <laughs> I but great idea. All right. Well, you know, I, I do try. I do try. I'm all about helping others when, if, and when I'm available to. All right. So he is. Mickey Avalon, this is Dadcast. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it right there, man. We got lots of good stories sure. from you. We got some information on your art, and music, and the tour coming up. And for everyone listening and watching this episode, um, as long as you're watching it, the first couple of days it comes out, make your plans. Go check out Mickey Avalon Pacific Northwest, a bunch of shows in Oregon and Washington, uh, 23rd through the 28th, like you said. Um, we will be seeing yeah. you in Bend on the 20th. 3rd february 2022 uh should be a good show mickey thank you so much man for taking time and coming on dadcast bro it's been a, been awesome yeah, thank, thank you. you uh see you guys in a few weeks yeah uh, and then for the for the tickets if anyone does see at the beginning it's mickeyavalon.com slash tour there you have it mickeyavalon.com slash tour get your tickets it's going to be a good time uh to everyone listening and watching thank you always for your support we appreciate you uh if you're checking it out on the youtube channel make sure you like up subscribe comment and uh mickey avalon once again thank you man we appreciate you we'll see you soon Thanks. see you guys soon all right brother take care man you too bye